Howdy, y'all. It's your old pal Jazz McKay here. Now, I haven't gotten around to making a video focusing on the debate this week between our President Donald J. Trump and uh, former Vice President Sleepy Joe Biden. So, uh, well, better late than never, I guess. First, I want to send my thoughts and prayers out to the uh, President and the First Lady for a speedy recovery from Rona. And before we go on, before we go any further, please subscribe to my channel and click on that little bell so you get notified every time we've posted a new video, which we do pretty regularly. Look, folks, instead of moderating a uh, substantive debate on the issues this past Tuesday, Chris Wallace baited Donald Trump and fought with him and, and blatantly sided with one candidate over the other, that candidate being Joe Biden. Yet we read at theblaze.com that it was all Trump's fault. Wallace responded to criticism Thursday over his moderating of the chaotic first debate, saying that Trump ruined his plans for a substantive discussion. So he's on with Bill Hemmer the next day, and uh, Bill Hemmer asks him, I know you, I know that you had a plan. At what point did your plan blow up? You know, we began the first segment on the Supreme Court. They each got their two minutes, and they both uh, uh, obeyed in that particular case. Uh, then Biden started to answer a question, and the president started interrupting him. No, 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 no. Hold the phone there, Chris. Hold the phone there. It was Biden who interrupted Trump first. In fact, here's the deal. Now, here's the deal. The deal is... The deal is that... That Biden interrupted Trump twice, and then you interrupted Trump before he ever interrupted anybody. And that's the deal. Watch this. So let's get going. Our first subject is the Supreme Court. My first question to both of you tonight, why are you right in the argument you make and your opponent wrong? And where do you think a Justice Barrett would take the court? President Trump, in this first segment, you go first, two minutes. Okay, so Trump gets the first question. He gets his two minutes. Thank you very much, Chris. I will tell you very simply, we won the election. Elections have consequences. We have the Senate. We have the White House. And we have a phenomenal nominee, respected by all, top, top academic, uh, good in every way, good in every way. In fact, uh, some of her biggest endorsers are very liberal people from Notre Dame and other places. So I think she's going to be fantastic. We have plenty of time. Uh, even if we did it after the election itself. I have a lot of time after the election, as you know. So I think that uh, she will be outstanding. She's going to be uh, as good as anybody that has served on that court. We really feel that. Uh, we have a professor at Notre Dame, highly respected by all, said she's the single greatest student he's ever had. He's been a professor for a long time at a great school. And uh, we just, uh, we won the election, and therefore we have the right to choose her. And very few people knowingly would say otherwise. And by the way, the Democrats, they wouldn't even think about not doing it. If they had, the only difference is they'd try and do it faster. There's no way they would give it up. They had Merritt Garland, but the problem is they didn't have the election. So they were stopped. And probably that would happen in reverse also. Definitely would happen in reverse. So we won the election and we have the right to do it, Chris. Excellent, excellent opening statement. Now it's Joe Biden's turn. I, uh, the American people have a right to have a say in who the Supreme Court nominee is. And that say occurs when they vote for a United States senator and when they vote for the President of the United States. They're not going to get that chance now because we're in the middle of an election already. The election has already started. Tens of thousands of people have already voted. And so the thing that should happen is we should wait. We should wait and see what the outcome of this election is. Because that's the only way the American people get to express their view is by who they elect as president and who they elect as vice president. Now, what's at stake here is the president's made it clear he wants to get rid of the Affordable Care Act. He's been running on that. He ran on that. And he has been governing on that. He's in the Supreme Court right now trying to get rid of uh, the, uh, the Affordable Care Act, which uh, will strip 20 million people from having insurance, health insurance now, if, if, they, if it goes into court. And, and uh, the justice, and I have nothing, I'm not opposed to the justice, she seems like a very fine person. But she's written before she went on the bench, which is her right, 
that she thinks that the Affordable Care Act is not constitutional. The other thing that's on the court, and if, if, if it's struck down, what happens? Women's rights are fundamentally changed. Once again, a woman could be held, pay more money because she has a pre-existing condition of pregnancy. We were able to, they were able to charge a woman more for the same exact procedure a man did. Whoa, 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 wait. I hate to interrupt Joe, but uh, did, did, did Joe just say that if you repeal the Affordable Care Act that a woman will pay more for her pregnancy than a man would? Once again, a woman could be held, pay more money because she has a pre-existing condition of pregnancy. We were able to, they were able to charge a woman more for the same exact procedure a man did. Yeah, yeah, that's that's what he said, all right. Hey, listen, if Trump didn't interrupt him over that bullshit, I mean, you got to give the guy some credit. But you know, I'm let's I digress. Let's 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 go on. Gets and that ended when we in fact passed the Affordable Care Act. And there's a hundred million people who have pre-existing conditions, and they'll be taken away as well. Those pre-existing conditions, the insurance companies are going to love this, and so it's just not appropriate to do this before this election. If he wins the election and the Senate is Democrat or Republican, then it, he goes forward. If not, we should wait until February. Okay, so that was uh, both candidates' opening statements. Trump was uh, somewhere around a minute and 20 seconds, I think. Uh, Joe Biden's comments were just a little bit over two minutes. By the way, there was so much wrong with what Biden said there. I wanted to interrupt so badly besides just the man and woman pre-existing condition and pregnancy bit, right? Now it's time for Donald Trump to rebut and pay very close attention to who interrupts who. Okay, Justice Ginsburg said very powerfully, very strongly, at some point, 10 years ago or so, she said a president and the Senate is elected for a period of time, but a president's elected for four years. We're not elected for three years. I'm not elected for three years. So we have the Senate, we have a president. He's elected to the next During election. that period. There's interruption number one. Of time, during that period of time, we have an opening. I'm not elected for three years, I'm elected for four years. The and the 100 million started. people, Joe. And there's interruption number two. The 100 million people is totally wrong. I don't know where you got that number. The bigger problem that you have is that you're going to extinguish 180 million people with their private health care, that they're very That's happy That's simply with. not true. Well, you're that, certainly going to that, socialist. You're happy. going to this, socialist this, this is, we're, we're now into, gentlemen, we're now into open discussion. Open discussion. Open discussion. And there's interruptions three and four from Joe Biden and then Chris Wallace to let everybody know that now we're going to interrupt each other. I mean, this bullshit that Donald Trump interrupted first is is absolute nonsense and right there it is for you to see i'm just setting it straight and to be perfectly honest with you that little smirky smirk that joe biden likes to do was quite irritating um and i do believe that at that point at this point after being interrupted four times by these two guys trump decided hey look you know what I, all the all bets are off. The gloves are off. I'm going at it. And he did the alpha male thing that Donald Trump does so well and dominated the rest of the debate. Was he rude? No, he was real. And that's what people like about Trump. That's what I like about Trump, which is why this is his most popular campaign slogan. But Chris Wallace just can't get over it. The president interrupted either Biden's answers or my questions a total of 145 times. Eh, actually, actually, Chris Wallace just can't get over himself. And, and you know, I felt like I had, had gotten together all of the ingredients. I had baked uh, uh, this beautiful, delicious cake. And then, frankly, the president put his foot in it. You know what, Chris? If that was a beautiful, delicious cake that you baked, why did the frosting smell like a fart? And considering that so many people have referred to it as a shit storm, I think a more apt metaphor would be a shit cake, like this beauty that we have right here, or maybe a pie that Donald Trump used to smash right into Chris Wallace's face. <laughs> A hundred and forty-five times. You missed me. Which is 
way more than what a minute. Wallace likes to say Trump interrupted 145 times, yet it was Wallace who interrupted Trump 76 times, and he only interrupted Biden 15 times. And one more thing, why in the hell did Wallace insist and repeat over and over again these demands that Trump denounce once again the liberal bugaboo of white supremacism? Trump has already denounced racism and racists countless times, including in the 2016 debates that Chris Wallace also moderated. And maybe he could have avoided being seen as a partisan hack if Chris Wallace had insisted that Joe Biden answer serious questions like whether he intends to subvert the Constitution by packing the Supreme Court. Speaking of liberal propagandists from the uh, Fox News channel, John Roberts exploded and had an absolute utter meltdown over this uh, white supremacy thing. But we'll cover that in another video. Until then, this is your old buddy Jazz McKay signing off. God bless America and death to the new world order. Well, thanks for watching, and be sure to like this video, subscribe to my channel, share to your social media, and leave nasty comments below. Also, follow me on Twitch, where I do a podcast Monday through Friday at noon Pacific time. That's www.twitch.tv slash The Jazz McKay Show.